Hello and welcome to Northridge Friends Church. We're so glad you chose to join us here today. Today, our body is watching a live stream from MAYM, our yearly meeting. That's the churches that we all are a part of. And if you'd like to see that live stream, if you'd like to be a part of that with the rest of the body, this is the website. We are going to go ahead and give a, ser- a service here um, online. And so if you'd like to listen in, we'd love for you to do that. And we're going to continue on in our series in Philippians. And today we're going to be looking at Philippians chapter 2, verses 19 through 30. This is one of those verses that if you were just to read your Bible, you would get to it and you might just kind of read through it real fast and not pay that much attention to it. He's, it's Paul talking about a couple of uh, young men who he works with, you know, and so it would be easy for us to look right over the top of this. But I think there's some really good things that we can bring out of this message and out of this sermon. So if you would just join me in prayer and we'll start. Lord, I love you and I thank you for the opportunity we have to be here and to serve you. And I just ask today that as we go through these verses out of Timothy, that you will just help us to gain knowledge from the things that we see in the these things, um, in the verses that we're reading. And let your spirit just touch our hearts to where we will get the message that is needed out of these verses. As I said, Paul is going to be writing about a couple of gentlemen. And what we see in Philippians is um, Paul is very personal. And he gets very personal with people. And he talks about the Philippians and how much he loves them. He talks about Timothy and Epaphroditus, who is the other person we're going to talk about today, and how much they are. When he talks about Timothy, he talks about him as a son. He said, this is is like a son to me, a son in Christ, uh, someone who is like me. And we're going to see some of that. But then when he gets to Epaphroditus, he talks about him as a brother. Um, And how each one of these guys had the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ that matched kind of what Paul was doing. And so we see this in uh, the two people he's going to talk about. And we want to have that mind of Christ. We want to be brethren with one another. And this is what we're looking at today. So the first verses we're going to look at are verses 19 through 24. And this is where Paul talks about Timothy. It says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I may also be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare. For everyone looks out for their own interest not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proven, proved himself because as a son with a father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things are going with me. And I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. So what we're looking at here is we have we see this whole verse about Timothy and what Paul's plans are for Timothy. We see him say it twice. I'm hoping to send Timothy to you. I want to send him to Philippi. I want to send him to you. And um, that way, and we see in verse 19, that Paul would be encouraged by what Timothy brings back to him. He wants Timothy to go and see the Philippians so he can come back and tell him a great report and just say, tell me how the Philippians are doing. Tell me, show me what they're up to. And this is really cool because Paul trusts in Timothy to do this for him. But we also see down in the verse 23 and 24 where Paul is trusting God with what the next steps are. He says, I'm not going to send Timothy till I know what's going on with me. And I'm hoping that someday I'll get to come back to you too. So he's telling him, I'm going to send Timothy. I hope someday that I get to come too. But in the meantime, I'm going to send him and and we're going to bless you with Timothy's presence. Um, Why use Timothy though? You may ask that question. Why would would Paul want to use Timothy? Um, And it says Paul had no one else like him. Now, I want you to hear what this actually means because that sounds weird from an English ear. Paul has no one else like me, like him. And it's meaning to us, we would go, oh, he's the only one. But it's actually a little different from that. The word that is actually used there in the Greek is isopsychos. Isopsychos. And it, it, it actually means like-minded or kindred spirit. So Paul looks at Timothy and he says, this guy thinks like I do. He believes like I do. He is a kindred spirit. He has the same faith in Christ that I do. 
So they had the same mindset going into this. And we looked at this, and this was important to Paul. If we just go back to verse uh, 2 of chapter 2, what we see is that Paul wants people to be united in spirit. They come together, and they're unified and uh, growing together. And that's what Paul saw that he had in Timothy. This person I grow in spirit with. We are unified. We are one in spirit. So therefore, when Paul is sending somebody to the Philippians, there's only one person that it makes sense to be so much, and that's Timothy. He said, the closest thing to me and my love for you is Timothy. And so then it goes on in that verse 20, and it says, who sincerely cares for your state. Uh, he sincerely cared for the Philippians. Um, when we the first week of this series, we talked about uh, we were reading out of Acts 16 where Paul went and met with different people, uh, three different types of people, and but. What I want you to see is right before that, it says this was Timothy's first time that he joined Paul and them on a mission trip. So Timothy's first mission trip was to Philippians. So as he joins him, they go into the Philippians and they start teaching. Now, uh, we've done several mission trips. And uh, what we have found is that a lot of times people are really drawn to that first place they go. We took a group of ladies to um, Rwanda and Ethiopia. And as we went in, um, the first place we went was Rwanda. And a lot of the ladies really grabbed on to Rwanda because it was that first place they had been. And they they loved it. And a lot of them went back and did missions work in Rwanda area in the, uh, with either adoption or uh, child care or going back to orphanages, visiting back there, because they had this draw into this first mission field that they were in. We went to Ethiopia and they didn't have the same draw because it wasn't that first effect, that first memory that they had of it. This is, I think, what you see in Timothy right here. As you see this draw into this missionary field, and he goes, this is the first place that I would... It also helps that when they go in, they create the church at Philippi. So Timothy was there from the beginning of this church. So he goes in and he's there in the beginning. He's working with this congregation and he cared about them. Therefore, when Paul says, I'm sending Timothy, there's no one better suited. There's no one better for this task because Timothy loves you guys. He, that was, he loves who you are and he will care for you. And the other thing is we see that Timothy has his devotion to Christ. And this we see in verse 21, and it says, He was devoted. He was so devoted, more than any of the others. A lot of other people teach Christ, and yet they're still kind of living in their self. But Timothy was so devoted to Christ that he sought Christ above all else. He sought Christ above what other people were doing. And we see this in Timothy, that he had this heart. So when Paul is sending him, he's saying, No one else surpasses Timothy when it comes to the mind of Christ. He thinks like me. We are the same in this. We, we have the same kindred spirit of how we love people. So we see that he loves with it. And then he goes on to say that Timothy has proven himself in similar situations. And you know that Timothy has become this person, this person who I can send and have faith in and know that he's going to do the work of God. And I can have faith that Timothy is going to be the person he needs to be. And he's done it with humility. As a son with the Father, he serves with me. So he's saying that this is my son. He comes and he serves with me. I I lead and he follows and we serve together. And he's so proud of Timothy. And he says, this guy comes in and shows Christ to the people around him. This guy comes in and shows Christ. So as I send him to you and the, uh, to you, the Philippians, I know that you are going to be loved because this young man loves like I love. That's what Paul's saying. And he says, this is like my son and I send him to you. It's the attitude that we have to have is this attitude of I'm going to go in with the mind of Christ, not seeking selfish ambition, but go in with the mind of Christ, wanting to serve Christ. This is what we see in Timothy. And Paul says, this is the closest thing I have to a son. And I want you to see who, what he's doing and who he is. Now we're going to move on and we're going to read verses 25 through 30. And we're going to see about another man named Epaphroditus. And this one Paul refers to as a brother. And so we'll read the verses here. It says, But I think it is necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus, my brother, co-worker, and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, from whom you sent to take care of my needs. For he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill and almost died. But God had mercy on him. Not only on him, but also for me, 
to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I am all the more eager to send him, so that when you see him again, you may be glad and that I may be less, uh, have le- less anxiety. So then, welcome him in the Lord with great joy. Honor people like him, because he almost died for the work of Christ. He, lift, he risked his life to make up for, uh, for the help you yourselves could not give me. So who's Epaphroditus? We see Paul talk about him. And this is a young man that was sent to Paul from the Philippians. And the Philippians sent him to Paul so he could care for Paul and be there with him and to take care of him. So what does Paul list as his, his attributes? He says, first of all, he's my brother, a brother in Christ to Paul. What a blessed thing that would be to be is a brother in Christ to Paul. He goes on and says, fellow worker. In other words, this young man had come and he had worked alongside Paul. He was working to spread the gospel of Christ right alongside Paul. So he's a brother, a fellow worker, and it also says fellow soldier. He's sharing in the conflicts that Paul is going through. He's sharing in what all Paul is having to deal with. And we see this as just a beautiful sense. I want to be that soldier that walks alongside. I want to be there with him. And then it says, your messenger. So what he's saying is, you sent him to me. And this is, uh, I'm so thankful that you sent him to me because then the next thing is, who ministered to my needs. And it says, with Paul, he's saying, this young man came and took care of me. You sent him to me because you couldn't be here yourselves. So you sent him to me and he offered himself in service to me. So what kind of man was he? He was a man who loved the people. When he heard that the people of Philippi found out he was sick, he was, he was disheartened because he didn't want them to fear for him. He didn't want him to be scared. So he knew what they were thinking. He's like, I want them to be. So he loved the people of Philippi. He loved Paul. He was serving him. So we see that he's a man devoted to the work of Christ. And we realize that he's a servant. He's a server. He's a person that gets in and serves other people. He was, willing to li- he was willing to risk his life in this service for Christ. He was willing to give up who he was to serve Christ better. He didn't mind being a messenger. He wanted to be the messenger. And the Philippians needed him to be that messenger. So he brought a gift to Paul from Philippi. He, brought, he, had, he had come and he had served Paul. And now Paul was probably going to send back this message. So as he's getting ready to send Epaphroditus back, I have a feeling this book, this, these letters that we're reading, he's going to send back with him. And so you see this man has been willing to serve. He, he demonstrated humility. He demonstrated willingness. He demonstrated the mind of Christ in a willingness to serve others. So he goes and he does the work that he does. So now we've seen Paul look at Timothy and say, this is like my son. I love this man. He's like my son. And he looks at Epaphroditus and he says, this is my brother, my brother in Christ, who has the mind of Christ to serve others. These two men have done what they could do to serve, to be a part of it. Now, if you really want to call me Epaphroditus, I'm okay with it because when you actually look up the name Epaphroditus, it actually means handsome and charming. So if you want to call me Epaphroditus, I won't have my feelings hurt. Uh, But what we want to look at here is what does that mean to us in the church today? What does that mean to us in the church today? People like Timothy and Epaphroditus are held in high esteem. Why? Because they serve. See, we look back and we see these great church fathers. We see Paul, we see Peter, we see John, and we we think of how wonderful they were, but they were not where it ended. They weren't the end of the message of Christ. They weren't this, they weren't the final piece. There's more that came after. And what we're seeing here is Paul acknowledging the people who came after. Timothy, Epaphroditus, these guys came and served others. And the service continued through time. That's what I hope we're a part of as a church. Here at Northridge, I want us to be a part of that tradition. I want to live in that tradition where I go, I am a continuation of the message that was shared. Sharing the gospel of Christ. Having a mind of Christ. Having the mind of Christ in my service, in the way that I come and I serve others. We need to have the mind of Christ. We need to have the love of Christ exuding out of us to when we see other people, we care about them. We see that in Epaphroditus. He cared. 
I love the fact that Paul talks about it. He says he, that he will feel good. You guys will feel good about seeing him and I won't have anxiety. I don't want this guy to die because he loves you so much. I want him to be back with you. We need to have that love. We need to have that care that when we see people in need and we see people who are hurting, we jump in and we help. We love them. We have a willingness to serve. That's where we can serve Christ best is by willing to being willing to step into the line of people that comes after the great the great uh, men of the Bible. Today we might look at like a uh, Billy Graham and say Billy Graham just did amazing things and he had all these people who followed him and you say that's amazing and we love Billy Graham but he was following in the footsteps of those who came before him. We follow in the footsteps of those who come before us. Timothy and Epaphroditus lead the way. And we follow them and we serve with the mind of Christ. That is what we are called to do. Dear Lord, I love you and I thank you for all that you do. And I thank you for just who you are in our lives. Dear Lord, I just pray right now that you will just continually work uh, through this message uh, that we can be the hands and feet, that we can be the next generation, that we can be the next step in those who are serving you and having your mindset, dear Lord. Help us at Northridge to take on that mindset and grow in our love and faith in you. We love you so much, dear Lord. We praise your name. Amen.